Hello, I'm Frances from Windstep Homestead, and I have a chicken update for you. It's been a while since I've talked to you about my chickens, and they are the first thing I take care of in the morning. They like to be up with the sun. <laughs> And since I'm the first one out in the mornings, I let them out. But before I get the chickens out, I need to get their food ready. I do make their food, and some of it I grind because they seem to not like it so much unless it's ground up. So let's go make their feed. All right, this is my workstation for making the chicken feed. I use a Nutribullet to grind up some of the, the grains. It has this blade, so it's really good at grinding grain and seeds. This is where I keep all the different grains that I put together for the chickens. The split peas I grind. They don't eat them unless they're ground up. They won't eat them in this split form. And I grind one cup at a time, and each day I give them two cups. I grind it up about eight to 10 seconds. Next, I'm going to coarsely chop some barley. The next grain is wheat, but I also add a fourth cup of flax seed. The flax seed you would think would be small enough and easy for them to eat, but they just don't eat it very good when it's whole. Okay, that's all I'm going to grind, but I do have some other grains that I'm able to buy that are ground or cracked, and I purchase them in that form so I don't have to grind them myself. They love corn, so I give them the cornmeal. And I also give them oats. These are cracked. And I give them some shelled sunflower seeds. And millet and a cup of powdered milk. Now, to the grains, I also add a tablespoon of powdered garlic and a tablespoon of oregano. Those are supposed to help to keep them healthy. And then I just give it all a stir. Okay, there it is. Now I have some chickens that I've separated into the chicken tractor. And so I give them a couple cups. So I'm gonna get that separated. All right, there's my chicken feed. Let's go take care of the chickens. Besides their feed, I always like to give them food scraps from the house if I have a full bucket. Here in the chicken coop, I have a pan here for a dust bath that has diatomaceous earth mixed in with the sand to keep them, hopefully, bug-free. <laughs> and I also have a pan here of gravel rocks, small rocks from the lake, just over here for their grit. And then I also have a container with some oyster shells. They spill that a, <laughs> a lot, but it's still there for them when they want it. I also put the food scraps in this container. It doesn't stay there, of course. They scatter it, but it starts out there. Good morning, Chicky Chicks. Of course, the food scraps, they go for first. They like that a lot. Now I'm also going to open the windows in the coop. I like to air it out during the day. Hey, Diana. <laughs> and I also like to check their waterers to make sure that they still have good water source. You're welcome. 
Okay, now let's go take care of the chickens in the chicken tractor. These chickens that I put in the chicken tractor, there's four of them. There's two Americanas and two Amberlinks. And when we had the rooster in the coop with them over the winter, he beat them up pretty good. They lost a lot of feathers on their backs. And since we got rid of him in the early spring, most of the chickens have grown their feathers back. But these particular four just don't seem to be growing their feathers back. And I treated one of them with some diatomaceous earth, thinking maybe it was a mite issue, but that didn't seem to do anything. So I've separated them, thinking that maybe the other chickens, they could be at the bottom of the pecking order and the other chickens are just pecking at them, keeping their feathers from growing back. My son did see that another chicken was pecking at one and and the others were fighting over feathers. That's why we're giving them more of the split pea to give them plenty of protein. But I really don't know why their feathers aren't growing back. So I've separated them <laughs> to see if that makes a difference and see if there's any chance that their feathers will grow back if they're separated. Since we had the chicken tractor that the roosters were in all last winter, I had a, a source to be able to do that. So I have the feed that I separated for them. I have them in the fenced yard and I move their tractor every day. I'm gonna go ahead and get their water out of the way and then I'll move it and then put the water and the feed back in the tractor. Now, they are constantly scratching and kicking up sand, and it gets filthy in their water. So I'm going to pour this water over on some of my plants, and then I will clean it up and put it back in. Okay, let's get this back in the chicken tractor. <laughs> Okay, come on, Diana. Now I have a few things I've rigged up in here so that I can move the chickens without so much taking in and out. <laughs> the water I have not yet rigged up so that I don't have to pull it out because I need to wash it out most of the time anyway. But this here is the feeder for their feed. A little food tray and we just wired it up so that it's not on the ground it's easy to move when I move the tractor it just goes with it and I can just feed it through the chicken wire from the outside another fun thing I rigged up is a nesting box I could have done a big building project and put a nesting box on the outside of the chicken tractor, but I think I wanted something a little more simple. So I got this crate that I had in the shop. It had other things in it. I emptied it out and I used bungee cords here, two of them, to support it up on this uh, bracing and around the frame to keep it off the ground so it would move when I moved the chicken tractor. I filled it with straw and I have a a stone egg in there they didn't seem to lay eggs in this right away they were laying them just on the ground <laughs> and so I put that stone egg in there and now they all lay their eggs inside this nesting box it's worked out pretty good now one other thing I give them I put oyster shells in this little container each morning because they get it full of dirt and dump it and since I'm moving them around, I need to rig up something that isn't on the ground so that that way, hopefully I don't have to refill it every day. But for now, I refill it. So I just use some oyster shells that are crushed a bit. 
Okay, chickens, here you go. Okay, we're back. It's time to give the chickens their snacks. <laughs> they love this time of day. They start clamoring at their gate when they hear my door open and close. They're so conditioned for their snack time. I also collect eggs at this time. They're usually done laying eggs by this time in the evening, and so it's a perfect time to collect. Now let me show you what I give the chickens for their snacks. These here are mealworms, and the chickens love them. A mix of mealworms in this container with sunflower seeds. So I put about five cups of mealworms and five cups of sunflower seeds. Now I just stir them around a bit, mix them up. All right, let's go give them the snack and collect some eggs. It was important to give them a high protein, high fat snack before they went. I prefer to wear a glove when I'm grabbing mealworms, dried or not. <laughs> I always throw out about three handfuls of their snack mixture. They really like it a lot. <laughs> now I collect the eggs. And I've got four there and another four over here. So eight so far. Now let's go give the chickens and the chicken tractor a snack, along with collecting whatever eggs they might have deposited for me. I give them just a couple smaller handfuls. And it looks like we have three more eggs. So we got a total of 11 eggs today. That's a good amount. We often get a dozen a day. Thank you for joining me on this journey. I've been really enjoying the chickens and Diana, of course. I'm so grateful for you. Until we meet again.